This is a film about people, Nobel's people. Alfred Nobel, the Swede, who combined in an almost unique way the great inventor and the great entrepreneur, whose inventions gave the world high explosives. And it was their commercial success that was to be the rock upon which ICI was built. When he saw our dear site in 1871, he described it as everlasting bleak dunes with no buildings, a wonderful sand desert where the wind always blows and often howls. A Glasgow engineer, John Downey, introduced Nobel to his British partners and to Ardea. Downey, with 47 men, made the sand desert into an explosives factory. Ardea's first charge of nitroglycerine, the key to it all, was made on the 13th of January, 1873, on this plant. More inventions, more products, more Nobel's people. From the earliest days, women played an important part in production at Ardea. All of the girls worked in bare feet, apparently from choice. It certainly wasn't compulsory, any more than the wearing of a bowler hat. But the N.G. Hillman was king, his throne a one-legged stool. He had to stay alert, so if he nodded off, he fell off. Most of the explosives were sent out by sea. There was no wharf at the time, so ships were loaded directly from the beach. So what has become of the wonderful sand desert a hundred years on? The desert has blossomed, nature and man alike. It has become a place of contrasts, the beauty of nature, the starkness of industrial structures, the sacred and the profane. It has developed its own corporate personality, but the wind still blows. Ardea is now a large chemical complex. complex of buildings, plants, pipes, ducts, a complex of integrated systems, integrated skills, a complex of people at work. Nobel House, the headquarters building, the face we show to the public, to visitors, customers, vendors, where the flag flies and just occasionally words fly. But not, of course, at reception. Let's meet just a few of the headquarters staff who service the business. Purchasing department, who find the million things we need when we need them.
information technology, where information of all kinds is both raw material and product. Communications by telex, by telephone. Right. The building fee the key to the extension 7164. Right. No, by mail. Nobel's people have healthy appetites. Ask the catering staff. The side shop for the titbit, the morning paper, the chit chat. Tomorrow's experts and where we train them. The training center for apprentices and everyone else on site. To aspire to leadership takes preparation and hard work. Any works, but especially an explosive's works, needs to be secure against intruders. The are dear angels of the medical center. And here's the archangel himself. The library, a collection of the arcane, the trivial, the profound, the fascinating, always the fascinating. Project Engineering, the people who plan, scrutinize and analyze. All proposed changes to plant and processes are subjected to rigorous examination. These are just a few of the headquarters people. Africa House. No, it isn't a foreign embassy building, it's our staff restaurant. It got its name and its distinctive appearance exactly 50 years ago, in 1938, when it formed part of the Empire Exhibition in Glasgow. When the exhibition closed, the building was gifted to us by AE and CI. The building and the glorious bluebells which surround it have become a conversation piece ever since. Sadly, the bluebells are with us for only a few weeks in the year. Possibly the best known and best loved of all of Nobel's people over the years have been the detonator girls. Generations of them have enchanted, exasperated, and impressed. DL5 is the finishing school for detonator girls, where they learn the intricacies of such things as E-fans, electric fuse assembly machines. Indeed, that's the business of DL5, the assembly of electric fuses for detonators. Some of the fuses have their fuse heads hand-soldered onto the lead wires. This calls for a precise and exact skill, which looks deceptively easy. The problem is that it has to be right first time. The Defense and Aerospace Devices Building, custom built to meet the demands of a market of growing importance to Nobel's business. The demand is for high quality, sophisticated devices, small in size, big in performance. Devices like the Metron Actuator, which finds its way into everything from a space vehicle to a racing car. Packaged energy at the throw of a switch. Metron is only one of a family of devices being developed and made here. Protractors, retractors, guillotines, gas generators, the list is long and ingenious.
what they all have in common is an insistence on high quality. Quality ensured by constant inspection and checking. X-ray examination, unit by unit. Marking, which ensures accountability. And finally, packing. And now, a change of pace. How do we respond to an emergency on site? We have our own fire service, specially trained in dealing with the kind of emergencies that might arise because of the materials we use. Let's watch the action. Um, uh, emergency control tell fire personnel we have an alarm from K-43. Will we attend and acknowledge? In other parts of Ardea, the excitement is less obvious. The only thing that ruffles feathers here is the breeze. We were lucky enough, and nosy enough, to see a breeding pair of swans with their young. We see them first in May. Things are imminent and anxious. The waiting is over. The chicks here are just two days old. Two months on and the summer grasses are greener. Chicks are bigger and bolder. Most of the brood are off doing their own thing. It's hard to believe that this is a chemical works. It is a remarkable example of man and nature coexisting.
other inhabitants of this beautiful part of the site are the distribution teams of loaders with their narrow gauge railway, known by everyone as the dinkies. The trains, I mean, not the men. There is a total of 35 miles of narrow gauge track over the whole site, servicing, among other buildings, 90 magazines with explosives, accessories, raw materials and intermediates. The sad thing is that this activity is reducing rapidly as we become better at managing our stocks and slicker at turning them over. And it is a sad thing, because although this looks like a charming anachronism, a recent study has confirmed that this is still the most cost-effective way of moving, cheaply and safely, up to 20 tons of explosives, directly from point to point across the site. H acid, the largest chemical plant on the site, a modern multi-million pound investment in the colours and dye stuffs industry. But the major difference between H acid and most of the other chemical plant on the site is in the control room, because the production on H acid is computer controlled. The operator's interface with the plant is via the computer, via his keyboards and visual display units. Under normal operating conditions, the computer controls the plant directly, informing the operator of what it is doing and requesting information or assistance from him whenever it meets a problem that it cannot deal with. The sequence of operations that the computer must carry out is programmed into it and changed as production and development requirements dictate. This room marshals the 4,000 incoming and outgoing signals between the computer and the plant. Anhydrous ammonia is an unpleasant material to handle, which happens to be an essential raw material in the manufacture of nitric acid at the Kuhlman plant. In the spring of this year, we commissioned a new facility for the offloading of these tankers on site. Maintaining plant on a site as big and as complex as Ardea would be an impossible task without the help of a sophisticated planning system. But plants like the T7 acid plant present a peculiar maintenance problem. T7 is a continuous plant. It runs 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But it still has to be maintained to keep it producing at peak efficiency. So the maintenance work that needs doing is pre-planned in detail and packed into as short a shutdown time as possible. So many activities, often competing, so many different trades to be dovetailed into an effective team. Three weeks when there seems to be too much to do and not enough time in which to do it. Like all the best tricks, though, it comes out all right in the end. 
and the maintenance crews have time to stretch tired muscles and even perhaps look pleased with themselves. Till the next time. The challenge now, as it has always been, is to find and harness the undoubted talents that people have. Time and again, when put to the test, as it was in recent campaigns, it is clear how much talent there is in the company that we don't always take the fullest account of. It is clear, too, how much people want to be involved in making the company still better, how much they want to contribute to Nobel's, and in doing so, contribute to their own future. Butchers, bakers, candlestick makers, well not quite, but today's Nobel's people do so many things. Tradesmen, administrators, process operators, managers, clerks, supervisors, research scientists, engineers, so many skills. In this short film, we have been able to see only a very few of them, those we have not seen and indeed the sights we have not seen have their own stories to tell, make their own unique contributions. Nobel's people have been at Ardea for over a century. A century that has seen good times and bad. So what does the future hold? The future too will see good times and bad. But one thing we can say for certain is that it will see change. Nobel saw change. He shaped it. He influenced it. He exploited it. Nobel's people will do the same.